Hello, welcome to my video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use time series inspector to visualize spatial and temporal changes um, of the landscape. In order to follow this tutorial, you need to install the GE uh, map package. If you have not done this before, you can follow my previous tutorials on how to install the package. After that, you can clone the repo uh, using Git, or you can download the repo as a zip file and then unzip on your computer because we're going to use the examples uh, notebook uh, within this repo. So I have already uh, downloaded the repo. So and the examples is within the examples folder notebooks number 20 time series inspector so after you have downloaded the repo and uh, you can open uh, your terminal or an anaconda prompt then type jupyter notebook and just hit enter then it should open a uh, jupyter notebook uh, on the browser then navigate to the notebook uh, number 20 Okay, so let's get started. And uh, first of all, you need to import the package. If you have not uh, installed the package, you need to install the package first. And then uh, you might want to update the package because this is a new function I just uh, implemented. So uh, make sure you have the latest version. And in this example, I'm gonna show you how to use the NAP imagery, National Agricultural Imagery Program. So this is a program by the United States uh, Department of Agriculture, and it has the uh, one meter resolution imagery for the entire US uh, every two to three years. So every two to three years, you have full coverage for the US, one meter. So this is the best, uh, highest resolution imagery uh, available for the entire uh, US uh, for free. And um, it started from 2003, and uh, so starting in 2009, at the beginning it was only RGB, so three bands. Now we have also the near infrared uh, band, so four multi-spectral bands. It used to be one meter, now also have some, uh, for example, 15, uh, 50 centimeters. So it's the base imagery if you want, if you are looking for high resolution imagery uh, for the entire US. Okay, so it's a huge uh, uh, database. And in this example, I'm going to show you how we can quickly visualize um, using those uh, one meter resolution imaging. So I have a function here called a uh, NAP time series. All you need to do is just to specify well, the start year and end year because we are going to use the uh, full band with the near infrared. So it started from 2009 and the latest one is 2018. So this is the, uh, you can pass in the parameter. And then all we need to do is just assign this one to a uh, available okay and if you see it's not taking too long so next i'm going to show you here this line of code is basically create um uh, let me just run and show you what it is so create a list and this is the this are, are going to be used as um, the drop down list because when you have multiple years previously i have another tutorial i think number in here number uh, four create a split panel map but that one you need to pass in like layer one by one, right? It doesn't have an option for you to select as a, from the drop down list. So in today's example, I'm gonna show you how you can use that as a drop down list. And this is going to be a layer name. Uh, so 2009, 2010, and 11, all the way to 2018. Then we can set the visualization parameters. So we are going to use the near infrared and the red band and green band. So these are three uh, bands we want to use to visualize the data and then so all we need to do is just create the map then use this function called uh, TS inspector so TS inspector um, is time series inspector and then so for the left and the right let me just execute and to show you what it looks like um, it might take some time because uh, this is for the entire US so it's a huge um, database and from here you can see it creates a split panel map and you will see two drop down lists in here so the left time series is the one you want to use on the left and the one on the right and the layer name is what you're going to see from the drop down list and also similar on the right so let me see in here right uh 2009 all the way to 2018 
and the left and the right we're going to use the same time series but you don't have to you can pass in two different time series so it depends on what you want what you want to visualize so because in here i just want to compare uh, the net imagery so uh, they're using the same so left and right are the same uh, but you can select different layers so for example i on the left i want to use a uh, 2009 and on the right i want to use for example 2017 and keep that in mind it it has full coverage every two to three years so not uh, every location has data for every year but um, you can just um, zoom in and zoom out to take to, to double check. So, for example, here is uh, in the um, North Dakota, and it has data from 2009 all the way to 2017. One, um, uh, so multiple time periods. And so, from the left and the right, so also the layer name. The layer name is what is going to be swapped in here. So again, these are the same. And lastly, you have two. Other parameters called uh, left VIS. So this basically the visualization, and this is come from here. We just want to use the near infrared, red and green bands to visualize the data. And keep in mind, this can all the left and the right that uh, do not have to be the same. They can be um, different. So it's up to you what you want to use. Later, I'm going to show you the example that use uh, different data layers. Okay, so this is one meter resolution data. Uh, let me maximize uh, full screen just to show you more details. So this is the best available high resolution data for the entire US, one meter resolution. So you can um, visualize any location you want. Um, so for example, here we can zoom in to see, for example, here. Um, Uh, you can see any changes. For example, if you're interested in uh, surface water or uh, urban land cover, you can use this to visualize uh, the changes. For example, game zoom in. Right. One meter resolution. So if you can see from here, right, uh, you can see the water. Um, the left is 2009, the right is 2017. Right, so you can see the water is expanding yeah, in these uh, uh, wetlands or service water. So you can continue to zoom in. Uh, you can um, zoom to any location you want right, and to see the changes. You can also change, for example, I can change to um, 2011, see if it has data. If it doesn't have data, then you need to change to the other one. Okay, so this one, no data. So how about 2014? And this is for the entire US, so the data is huge, and it might take some time to load, but um, it's pretty nice. So now you can have the data to visualize for the entire US, any location you want, uh, and you there's not uh, much coding you need. Okay, so uh, this is for the uh, USDA NAP imagery. So next, I'm going to show you Landsat data. Again, Landsat has um, global coverage, so we're going to create do something very similar. First, we want to import uh, the package, and then we're going to create an interactive map. So in here, because the land set, the imagery, uh, have uh, just too many images, so it might take a long time to actually create global uh, uh, mosaic. So in this example, I'm just going to show you how we can use uh, uh, to draw a rectangle and to select any, way, uh, any location you like and create uh, length set imagery uh, time series. So for example, uh, if I want uh, to visualize the urban uh, urban growth here in Las Vegas, all you need to do is just use the draw um, uh, rectangle. So from here, I, I draw a rectangle and then it will automatically be converted to an Earth engine geometry. Then all you need to do is just to retrieve the, the one we just drew. So there's a function called uh draw last uh feature and this one is a uh, earth engine feature then we can uh, re uh retrieve the geometry so you come um, get the geometry from the feature and then this one can become an ROI. so this is one way you can get the ROI. the other one you can directly define a geometry polygon okay so and then define the coordinates if you if you want be want to be very precise 
if you don't want to just draw a rectangle so for this one i'm going to comment out because i don't need this one okay you can certainly also print out the location so this one here give you the coordinates uh five coordinates so basically it's a rectangle from the uh, um, lower left and then um, upper left and then the right and then right bottom and then to the uh, again to the origin so once you create the ROI, then you can use the function called length set time series. So this is another function in the GE map Python package. And all you need to do is pass in the ROI, okay? Uh, the ROI that we just uh, draw in here. And then the start year, the end year. So the start year, the length set image is uh, length set four and five starting in uh, 1984. And then, so the complete year we have now is 2019. And the start date and end date basically is the month and the date. So uh, January 1st to December uh, December 31st. So basically the entire year. And then it's going to just calculate the median. So you get the base cloud-free imagery uh, for that location. And then you will get uh, return an image collection. So this is just execute this one. And similarly, uh, because we have this so many years, then when you add to the drop down list, you want to have uh, the layer name. So we do something similarly in here. Uh, Lane set 1984, right? And 19, 1985, all the way to 2019. And then we set the visualization parameters. In here, we are similarly, we're going to use the near infrared, the red and green band. And then after that, all we need to do is just to execute this line. Essentially, it creates an interactive map and then also create the split panel. So the time series inspector, if you see from here, right now we have all the years um, uh, we want, we, 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 we want. So from 1984 all the way to 2019 on the right, similarly is the same. And the layer name, the left and the right are the same. The visualization parameters are also the same. Then we can center the, um, the the map to the ROI that we use. And then you can also set the zoom level. So now let's just quickly take a look. Okay, we can select 1984. And the next one here, for example, I just want to see uh, 2019. And so you, these are all um, in behind the scene. It create the image collection for you. So you don't need to uh, write algorithm to do it by yourself. Now you can just visualize, okay? So from the left is 1984 and 2019, okay? So you can see the changes for 35 years, right? You can zoom in, you can zoom up uh, to see more um, details. It might take some time uh, to load the full resolution, okay? But you can clearly see uh, the changes, okay? So. Right. So you can also see the reservoir is just shrinking uh, from 1984 to 2010, but the urban area, right, fast growing and expanding. Okay, so this one is for the lens set data. Um, and lastly, I'm going to show you, uh, for example, lens set data and national land cover database, uh, so that you can see the left and the right are using different time series. Again, I'm going to create the imagery and then uh, I'm going to create an interactive map. So in this example, I'm going to use the national land cover database. Um, if you don't know the image ID, you can click here, data, and then you can search, for example, land cover or NLCD. And then from here, you can select, for example, I want the national land cover database. And then, oop, uh, probably I haven't updated this one yet. So, um, the package is not updated, but you should not see the error messages because I haven't updated the um, dependencies. Um, that's fine. So uh, let me uh, scroll to this one. So in here, um, this is the image ID and you can just execute. So you can see how many data layers within this image collection. So in here, uh, we have 1992, 2001, all the way to the latest one, 2016. And so in this example, I'm going to use this NLCD from 2001 every five years. We have one uh, national land cover database and for the entire US. So from 2001 all the way to 2016. Once we have this image, then we can put them into an image collection because uh, in the time series, you need to have the left and the right. So the left and the right 
each of them um, is an image collection. So you need to convert the image to image collection. Uh, so that basically is a time series. And then similarly, we are going to construct the data layers. Okay, so if you just uh, NLCD 2001, and then so this is also you can uh, create the ROI like what we did in the second example. You can draw a rectangle, or if you know what ROI do you want, you can define uh, the ROI. And then we're going to construct similarly the length set time series. The ROI, the start year right now, we change to 2001, and the end year. Uh, change to 2016 and similarly we want to use from January 1st each year to December 31st for each year and execute then we construct the data layer names similarly this one from 2001 to 2016 then we define the visualization parameters for lens set and name images so for uh, uh, not not name images this is basically uh, NLCD uh, I need to change the, the variable name and then from here um, you can just execute so lastly let's do this one so create the map and then we're going to pass in the left here would be the lens set data okay so for example i choose lens set 2016 and for the ROI that we used uh, earlier and on the right we are going to use the nlcd okay so if we see from here nlcd right now four layers so i select 2016 so the left names come from the lens set okay so these are the list uh, names and the right names come from here, right? Four layers. So the left come from lens set and the right come from uh, NLCD. And now if you zoom in, you can clearly see here, right? So the left is the lens set data. But the right is the national lens cover database classified, uh, classified based on uh, lens set data. Uh, they might not necessarily use the same data source like this one, but um, it should be pretty close because this is 2016, so the imagery uh, they use is also from 2016, but might might be from different uh, seasons. But this provide you a quick way for you to visualize, like uh, if you want to see uh, overlay different data layers uh, with the lens data. Okay, so see pretty pretty close uh, in terms of the classification. So this. You can define the ROI, uh, but for the NLCD is for the entire US because it's already an imagery, so we don't need to do processing. And for the for this one, the lens set um, time series because we need to construct it, and it takes a lot of uh, computation. So you want to select an ROI um, to do that. Okay, so that's all for this uh, tutorial. If you enjoyed the video please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.